you've been active on social media in attempts to set up a debate with Congressman Bob Latta. Why do you think he hasn't responded to your request by now? Well, Jaden, it's sad because, you know, many times Representative Latta doesn't respond to a lot of constituent requests. Um, you know, I hear stories all the time when I go throughout the district of people writing letters or calling his office and never receiving a response. So sadly, it's not untypical of Representative Latta not to respond to our requests. I mean, I, I'm a constituent as well. And, you know, I think it is important to have leaders who are respectful and responsive to the people. And the only way that individuals are able to get their point across and to really hear from the leaders themselves is to have some of these debates where leaders are able to express their opinions and, and tell constituents what their view of the future is. And that's what we believe that Ohio's fifth district deserves. And that's why we wanna see this happen because we want individuals to know that they have another choice, that there's another option out there and that they can vote for change. And that is our campaign. What has Congressman Latta done that has hurt District 5? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that when we look at, there's a couple different things, but I, I think one of the biggest things that Congressman Latta is doing that really hurts the representatives and the people of District 5 is that he's taking huge amounts of corporate PAC money from the corporations that he's supposed to be regulating. So, you know, that manifests in the pharmaceutical industry. And as you know, you know, the state of Ohio is top five in opioid related deaths since COVID-19. And, and since we have really been shutting some things down, we've seen opioid overdose, overdoses spike, unfortunately. And, you know, we're never going to get any common sense laws unless we have representatives who aren't taking hundreds of thousands of dollars from opioid manufacturers. We also have 300,000 individuals under the age of 65 who have a pre-existing condition in Ohio's 5th District. Congressman Latta has said that if he is reelected, he will want to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Uh, the Affordable Care Act is in the courts right now. If the Affordable Care Act gets repealed, there is an opportunity that the 300,000 people in Ohio's 5th District who are under the age of 65 who have a pre-existing condition will lose their health insurance. They'll lose their health insurance in the middle of a pandemic. And this is something that we just cannot stand for. The district you're running for includes parts of Lucas County, which has been hit hard, especially by the COVID-19 pandemic and other issues, including the opioid epidemic. If you become the representative of parts of Lucas County, what will you do to make sure that people that are under-resourced get the resources they need in order to live a great life in this district? Yeah, I appreciate you asking that question because, you know, a lot of times people in Lucas County feel underrepresented. You know, we had a, a great representative in Marcy Kaptur for so long, and, you know, I, I grew up in Lucas County. And then 10 years ago when they did the redistricting and they really gerrymandered our district, um, you know, a large swath of Lucas County was put into Bob Latta's area. And so people in Lucas County feel underrepresented. They feel underheard because Latta never shows up, especially in Lucas County. But the things that we're trying to do to really help the individuals here right in the, the Toledo, Lucas County area is I think first and foremost, we want to invest in infrastructure spending that will help boost the economy. And this kind of infrastructure spending is, of course, you know, new roads, new bridges, which we know Toledo so desperately needs, but it's also new schools, new hospitals. It is a cleaning up our water and ensuring that we're protecting Lake Erie. And of course, it's investing in alternative energy. So this is bringing new jobs, it's protecting the environment, and it's really ensuring that Lucas County and the Toledo area can move forward and become economically successful as we transition out of this uh, coronavirus pandemic. What will Lucas County and Wood County and other counties that are included in your district need in order to get that infrastructure repaired on top of other things? Jaden, I'm so glad you asked that question because, you know, the Lucas County area, the Wood County area, really all the counties, the 14 counties in this district are going to benefit so much by the infrastructure spending that we are going to be able to introduce. And there's actually a bill already in Congress in the Energy and Commerce Committee, which is the committee that Bob Latta sits in. It's sitting on his desk right now and he doesn't want to do anything to do it. And it will be, it will start a national infrastructure bank. 
So this will allow us to invest in infrastructure spending. It creates 25 million new jobs. And, um, you know, it actually, the way that the bank is set up, it doesn't even add to the uh, national debt. So no taxes, there's no new debt, and there's 25 million jobs. And, uh, you know, what we're trying to do is really upgrade the infrastructure to ensure that it is, you know, for the 21st century and to ensure that it is also, you know, economically sound, but also environmentally sound. And I think that that's the most important thing is really ensuring that all new infrastructure spending is also protecting the environment. Um, but again, you know, this is a way to create jobs. It's a huge job creator for this area. And that is something, something that is so desperately needed, as well as, you know, in some of our more rural areas, we're talking universal broadband internet, which is something that is huge, especially now with so many things online, with schools going online, with businesses going online. There are parts of Ohio's fifth district that do not have reliable internet access, and you just cannot be economically successful without reliable internet access, and that would be included in our infrastructure spending. I do want to note that I have reached out to Congressman Latta's office for comment. I have yet to hear back as of the time of this interview. I also want to ask you more about the COVID-19 pandemic in healthcare, which has become a issue, especially during the COVID crisis. The president wants to get rid of Obamacare and still he has not proposed a plan to replace it if he were to get rid of it. Do you think that Bob Latta is going to be a threat to people's health care? 100%, Jaden. Um, you know, I mentioned this earlier and I appreciate you bringing it back up. You know, the Affordable Care Act, uh, Obamacare, this is the whole reason that I got into politics. I saw my mom struggle as a single woman who could not afford an individualized insurance plan. And that is why I got into politics. That's why I joined the Obama campaign when I was in college. And the work we did helped pass the Affordable Care Act. And as I was saying, there are nearly 30,000 people under the age of 65 in our district who have a pre-existing condition. And of course, pre-existing conditions are covered under the Affordable Care Act. Now, Donald Trump may say something different, but that is not true. The reason that uh, pre-existing conditions are covered is because the Affordable Care Act is law. If Donald Trump gets his way, and if Bob Latta gets his way, Bob Latta has voted against the Affordable Care Act multiple times. So if Bob Latta is reelected, if Donald Trump's reelected, and they strike down the Affordable Care Act, anyone who has a pre-existing condition, including anyone who may have gotten COVID and recovered from COVID, that will be considered a pre-existing condition going forward. So anyone, if you're of the 300,000 people in our district who have a pre-existing condition, or if you have, you know, thank God recovered from COVID-19 and have a pre-existing condition, you could get dropped from your healthcare coverage. And that is something that 100% will be dangerous, dangerous to the healthcare of people right here in Ohio's fifth. President Trump, he is trying to get his SCOTUS nominee pushed through the Senate. Do you think that this new nominee is going to be a threat to people that live in your district? And in what specific ways can Amy Coney Barrett be just a bad choice for your district? Yeah. And again, I appreciate you asking that question because, I mean, I have nothing personally against Amy Coney Barrett. Um, you know, I think what we have seen and what we can look to is things that she has already published, law reviews that she has already published. And you look back at her writing and she says specifically that she disagrees with the Affordable Care Act. Now, Donald, the Donald Trump administration has a lawsuit right now that is going to be heard by the Supreme Court that will strike down the Affordable Care Act. And as I have mentioned many times in this interview, there are 300,000 people in Ohio's fifth district that have a pre-existing condition. So if the Affordable Care Act gets stricken down, which is very, very likely if this nominee gets passed because she has already written that she does not support the Affordable Care Act, then these 300,000 people will have, possibly will lose their health insurance in the middle of a pandemic. And this is, it's, it's criminal. I, I cannot imagine that these people would want to do this to individuals right here. Healthcare is so extremely important. Healthcare has to become a human right. And by pushing forward, jamming through this nominee weeks before the election, it's so hypocritical and it is very bad for the people of Ohio's fifth district. Election security, that's been an issue too as well with some people. They're not confident in the voting system. 
Uh, some people aren't confident in the Secretary of State, mail-in ballots. What is your message about that? Because I'm sure that many of the people that may be voting for you or Congressman Lada will be voting by mail this year. So what do you want them to know about you and about this voting process? Yeah, again, I truly appreciate you asking that question as well, because, you know, President Trump, unfortunately, has made it his mission to try to muddy the waters and, and tell people that voting by mail is, is dangerous and, and for some reason, you know, won't be accepted. The, the nice thing about that is that people in Ohio already know what it's like to vote by mail. We had a primary where we voted by mail. Everything went smoothly. Everything was fine. The results were perfectly fine. That will be the exact same thing that's going to happen this time. People have been voting by mail for hundreds or centuries, you know, and there are states, whole states in this country that only vote by mail. So we have plenty of practice with it. Um, you know, military personnel have been voting by mail for years. It's perfectly fine for our military. It's perfectly fine for our president himself. He voted by mail down in Florida, and now he's telling everyone for some reason it's not safe. Well, it's perfectly safe for him and it will be perfectly safe for you as well. Um, you know, if you're getting your mail-in ballot, again, mail-in ballots will be mailed to you uh, around October 6th. So, you know, after October 6th, start checking your mailbox if you requested an absentee ballot form. Uh, you can take that. If you don't want to, you know, unfortunately, our, our post office has been underfunded because of people like Bob Latta voting against post office funding. So, you know, if you're seeing your mail slow, if you're worried about your mail and you're seeing delays, you can actually take your absentee ballot after you fill it out and drop it off right in one of the drop boxes. Uh, you can check your board of elections to find out exactly where your drop box is. They are extremely safe. They are watched over. It's a bipartisan crew who are you know, going in there and looking at them. The boxes are locked. So it is very secure. It is very safe. And we all need to vote because the only way that we can get people out of office like Donald Trump or Bob Latta is by voting, making your voice heard, and your vote will be counted. Finally, Congressman Latta has been in his position for a very long time. Are you confident that you're going to be able to flip District 5 into a blue district? 100%. You know, Congressman Latta has been in office for a long time. And, you know, I think that something that myself, a lot of people that I talk to, even a lot of Republicans, know that there needs to be a change in Washington. And we cannot have this change if we keep voting for the exact same people over and over and over again. So if you don't like what's going on in Washington, if you're looking at your life and you don't like how it's going, if you think that it's not any better from 10 years ago, then vote for change. And this is the message that people are inspired by. This is the message that people are hopeful for. We have plans. We have plans for our healthcare, we have plans for our economy, we have plans for our environment. Bob Latta has no plans. That's why he doesn't wanna to talk to anyone because he has nothing to say. So if you wanna vote for change, vote for our campaign. Early voting starts on October 6th and uh, we couldn't be more excited because we know we are gonna flip the fifth district. District five congressional candidate, Nick Rabundo, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much, Jaden. I truly appreciate it. You're doing awesome work.